Ugh. Hi everyone, Nuthany Man Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Perfect Circle album, Eat the Elephant. A Perfect Circle, a rock band that originally turned heads in the 2000s for having a, a bit of an interesting supergroup-esque lineup. Of course, Maynard James Keenan of Tool fame on vocals, James Eha of Smashing Pumpkins was in the band as well. well. I mean, he's still in the band. Troy Van Leeuwen of Failure. There are also some members connected to uh, the uh, uh, Nine Inch Nails live lineup too. And A Perfect Circle's lineup over the years has, has been a bit of a revolving door as well. I mean, even at one point they featured Twiggy Ramirez of Marilyn Manson fame. In the early 2000s, A Perfect Circle was a bit of a different band on the alternative rock scene. They were taking a lot of the dark, moody, and vaguely industrial atmospheres happening in metal at the time and boiling them down into catchier songs and smoother ballads. Occasionally their first two albums were just a bit too spacey and maybe a tad pretentious for my taste, and all has been silent on the A Perfect Circle studio album front ever since, outside of like a covers album of, of anti-war songs that went over like a lead balloon. Still, considering how in high regard I hold a lot of the musicians in this band, how relatively unblemished their track record is, and the fact that uh, there's been talk of a new Tool album around the corner at some point, I'm pretty curious to see how A Perfect Circle would approach a new album in 2018. Especially since the band, I think, was always a bit more contemporary and had their ear to uh, whatever was going on in music trend-wise, as opposed to, like, Tool, for example, which I always thought was just a little bit more of uh, an indulgence. Um, a great indulgence, though. So would A Perfect Circle stick to their track? trademark sound? Would they update it a bit? Uh, would they get a good album cover? Jeez, that thing is bugly. Butt and ugly. It's butt ugly. I mean, I, I can't argue with that. A Perfect Circle does work to change their sound quite a bit on this record, to the point where some of the musical passages on this album sound like they've been ripped straight out of the post-rock playbooks of bands like Mogwai or even Mono. And A Perfect Circle has always had a relatively dynamic and dramatic sound, so it's not really all that surprising that they would take things in this direction. However, I didn't think some of the new material on this record would essentially be reduced down to really stiff lifeless piano rock, though. Like on the intro, the title track to this thing. The band puts a bit more gas in the tank on the next track, Disillusioned, while the glistening and spacey piano passages on this thing may be a little uh, overly dramatic and heavy-handed. They do balance out with the consistently groovy, ominous, and heavy alt-rock sections. Also on this track, some pretty dystopian lyrics about uh, humanity at large being overtaken by uh, animalistic desires. Man just chasing after anything glimmering, becoming easily distracted. There's a bit of a pretentious technology addiction angle to this track as well, which I don't think is all that well put, nor do I entirely agree with it. I mean, mankind has always been addicted to some kind of technology. I mean, you guys are using arrows and guns and radios and and printing presses and 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 uh, uh, things that clean water and, and pasteurize milk you're just addicted to technology the very eerie the contrarian is another track on the record i dig quite a bit the song features a bit of harp and sounds like what would happen if you forced cigaros to write a track that would appeal to tool fans in the mid 2000s some very heavy dramatic drum grooves very eerie lead vocals and as far as the guitar and the bass and, and the placement of the harp it's all very meticulous how it builds and progresses, which is something I typically appreciate out of any music project Maynard is involved with. He sees the value in very subtle progressions and builds, which helps a perfect circle on this track and others create these depressing musical downward spirals into the deepest, darkest depths of the human psyche. The song in this case being about lying, manipulating, getting one over on people, tricking others for your own benefit, and then religion, which has always been a go-to topic for Maynard in his music, pops up on this record as well. Well, specifically on the track The Doomed, where it seems like he's portraying Jesus in the lyrics as dying and that kind of being a moment of abandonment of not only him but also humanity in general. As we now live in a world that Maynard portrays as being evil, filled with sloths and gluttons and the like. The instrumental's not half bad either. Themes of Jesus and, and religious virtue also come up on the track Talk Talk, essentially about how praying without any kind of action or effort to do anything or change the evil in the world is useless and meaningless and pointless and futile and why the hell are you doing it? Now, I don't 100% know what Maynard Maynard's interpretations of the teachings of Jesus Christ are, but whatever that is, he clearly is of the opinion that those both theist and, and not-so-theist 
are, are falling very short of that. There's also an incredibly dark, dense, and overwhelming finish of bass and guitars just layered and stacked to an orgasmic intensity at the finish. So Long and Thanks for All the Fish is one of the most richest, most harmonious, and, and maybe most celebratory tracks on the entire record, although it is a song that seems to be about uh, doomsday. A melodic send-off for the end of the earth, obviously. The title is a huge and obvious reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so if you've ever read that book or seen that movie, you kind of get what the band is going for thematically as far as the lyrics go on this track. However, after this song on the track list, I, I think the album mostly kind of trails off though in terms of quality. DLB is a kind of gothic and so-so piano passage, which I guess is fine as an interlude, but uh, it's, it's not like it's kind of giving us a break from anything that we need a break from on this album. Much of the record is pretty pensive, very moody, very introspective. What this moment on the record is giving us kind of a breather from, I don't know. Meanwhile, the track Delicious features some of the most clunky and pretentious lyrics on the entire album, with Maynard just trying to pack 10 pounds of verbiage into a a uh, few minute song. I mean, I appreciate his wish to make sure that there's some kind of meaningful, deep, spiritual, or socio-political message running through every single song here, but this is clearly an instance where, where the, the, the tune of the track suffers at the hand of Maynard trying to fit everything he can think of during his vocal passages. Not to mention the instrumental on this track sounds like it could have landed on OK Computer or like even Radiohead's The Bends. Not exactly sure what's, what's driving that change of pace. And to try to take it back to the lyrics, uh, easily the song that comes away with the worst of them has to be the closer. That is the song Get the Let Out, which if you look at the lyrics here, they're easily the most redundant, repetitive, and tedious on the entire record. I mean, maybe there's a particular idea here that Maynard is attempting to communicate on this song, but uh, w whatever it is, he doesn't really build it up or explain it all that well. And then there's the borderline laughable, a very heavy, very dark, very funky hourglass, which features not only rapping at the intro of the song, or at least what sounds like it, but also some uh, ridiculous countdowns toward the finish of the song. The verses feature these vocals with just like these crazy muffled warp manipulations on them, and then some robot vocals as well. It sounds almost as goofy and gaudy as like, oh God, what's that song? That doll dag a ziggy zag, whatever song it was off of Marilyn Manson's The Golden Age of Grotesque. The song Feathers is an okay track. It's maybe a little bit too melodramatic on the vocal side, but it's easily one of the better songs than the last leg here. But really that's kind of it for this album for me. It really is a bit of a night and day difference in terms of consistency and quality and focus as soon as you hit that midpoint, which is why for me at the end of the day, this record is just kind of a mixed bag. Even as high as some of the high points on on this thing are. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this record. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like. If you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. Uh, also hit the bell as well. And over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, a perfect circle forever.